Wow, um, what a chapter, right? I prefer this chapter above a lot of the chapters that got released after the whole movie thing was done over, right? So this chapter actually gives us a lot to talk about and, you know, separate videos, which I'm going to do later in the future. But, right, um, let's start from the beginning. So, obviously, Boruto is getting prepped, right? And then Katasuke actually comes in with this um, Mega Man looking um, suit. Apparently it was used to rehabilitate people, but then he turned it into like a fighting kind of thing. So this is like an Iron Man kind of thing going on here. And um, I did a poll, right, talking about Ninja Tools and I asked you guys to vote. And you guys actually voted. So the Ninja Tool video is coming up next week talking about whether this is good and bad. As well as, you know, how... They could actually make this Ninja Tool stuff fit into the series without ruining anything because a lot of people actually have issues with it. And it's not just me alone, it's not just you guys alone, you know, other YouTubers who I do talk to also have problems with these Ninja Tools, right? So, Kataske um, has this new suit and he says, well, um, I modified it, right? So, there is this scene where Sumire talks to Sarada, right? And then she asks whether Boruto is popular with girls. Now, Sarada says it is just within his, you know, nature to befriend everyone. but if you really think about it, Boruto should be pulling a lot of girls because this guy has actually achieved a lot of feats, okay? He saved the entirety of Konoha from an attack by Sumire herself, right? So he saved the entire village, a feat which Naruto only achieved after he saved the village, you know, from Gara and also from Pain and all that kind of stuff, right? And also, Boruto saved the Mist Village because of what the bootleg Seven Swordsmen were about to do. He actually defeated the main guy who was behind the entire thing. And he also beat Momoshiki and Kinshiki. Like, those are a lot of major things to have on your CV in terms of what you have done. So, naturally, it would impress a lot of girls whether they like him for his fame or whether they like him for who he is. So, you know, naturally, Boruto should be pulling girls, right? So, Sumire asks uh, Sarada, are you interested in him? And then... So Sarada comes up with the biggest lie and says no, which is a fucking lie because we've seen her stalk Boruto since Boruto was a young age, so what the fuck is that? And then we have the scene where she was blushing intensely after Boruto promised to stay by her side and guard her, so what the fuck is that? And then we have that scene where she, you know, showed some sexual intent towards Boruto when this nigga came to talk about, you know, Shujoji and all that kind of stuff, so it's like, what the hell is that, you know what I'm saying? She's been doing all these things, but then when it comes to admitting it, she lies. Now the thing is is that somewhere someone said that apparently Sarada is not aware of her feelings towards Boruto but it's like in that panel right there she looked like she wanted to fuck the nigga raw so you cannot be telling me that she does not have or is not aware of her feelings towards Boruto because it is blatantly there. Now I admire Sumire telling Sarada that you know she likes Boruto right and I see it in two ways. First of all I think that she's very confident in herself and you know she knows herself right because Sumire doesn't have a facade going on and pretending to be mature when she actually you know is acting her age you know what I'm saying whilst Sarada he's doing that so i think maybe there could be an insecurity there or there's something you know going on with sarada that makes her put on that facade right so sumire is very confident and the thing is that she also trusts sarada right to be able to tell her this thing that she has for boruto so pretty much that shows the extent of friendship that you know sumire has for sarada and sarada has for sumire sumire would trust sarada with you know her secrets and sarada would not trust anyone because she pretends to be adult and she is very you know contained within herself so i don't know whatever she's dealing with she needs to overcome that in terms of who has the advantage of getting boruto sarada now knows that sumire likes boruto so it can be like okay i know you want this nigga so i'm gonna block you or i'm gonna do something to make sure you cannot talk to him or you cannot approach him and notice how you know she was happy when she said nah i don't like boruto and then ever since sumire said i like boruto you know her smile just faded and you know she has a straight face right so she has the advantage because she now knows that sumire likes boruto so she can counter her and then sumire has her advantage because she has confidence and can approach boruto and say it anytime since she does not have any facade put on so it is easier for her to do so the last thing i will say about this 
this is that this could potentially be just an attempt to push Sarada towards Boruto, right? Because we know Sumire is a very nice person and she will try to help people in the same way Boruto helped her. So, you know, she could be saying that she likes Boruto in order to, you know, rival Sarada. So Sarada will try or put in more effort to get next to Boruto because if you look at the, you know, panels and her smug face that she has, right? She's so relaxed about it. Like, she's so confident about it. So, you know, it could be that she's just saying that to push Sarada towards Boruto. And speaking of Sumire, looks like she's joined the whole club with her whole high heels and the Spongebob socks because Ikemoto is exploiting her as well and it is prophetic that I have to talk about this every single chapter. Now, the thing is I was going to ignore this but then the colour page was just speaking to me saying, you know, we have to say something about this and the thing is that we all blame Ikemoto. However, the thing is he is just the guy that draws this so whoever is making these decisions behind, you know, the whole planning of this entire story story like someone please get them some porn and let them beat their mates whatever child porn that they contain and then they can you know write these stories and draw them without that need to put that in there because i don't want to see this shit i mean if you're 12 years old and you like this shit then it's up to you but they are still putting this shit in there like we don't want to see it like i want to know what the japanese audience think about this because they have the biggest voice because they live there you know what i'm saying like that is the audience which the mangakas and every one from Shonen Jump tend to instead of the Western audience. So the fact that they haven't raised any issues, or at least from what I know, you know, actually proves that they might be okay with this. Now let's talk about the highlight of the entire manga. Okay, so the highlight is the dolls or what is in the box because they go in there, there's nothing there. Kataski is off track right now. The thing is, people are sleeping on Kataski saying that you know he is just a stupid scientist because of what he did during you know Momoshiki and Kinshiki's return right to earth right so the thing is you shouldn't because he is a jonin and he's a jonin for a reason now obviously you know in this situation he goes and then he gets mesmerized by the technology so that's not like a jonin's way of thinking right boruto tells him yo get the fuck out there and come outside because you know we are still on a mission right so these puppets wake up and then they attack them and then we learn something from the puppets right apparently they are automated now this reminds me of the puppets that toneri was using when he was fighting against naruto in you know the last the movie right which is canon so you know that is what it reminded me of and the thing is that they are using katon jutsus right and apparently you know it is something or ninja tech which was you know copied from konoha now apparently konoha is the only village right that is actually investing in these ninja tech right and then i think that is the reason why katasuke actually came out you know into the chunin to show all these other spectators because in the novels right it did say that there are hundreds of people out there you know like businessmen all these kind of people who invest their money who came there to watch the chunin exam so i think you know it was something that started in konoha and then katasuke was actually you know trying to demonstrate it within the chunin exam to get all these other villages to you know um invest in it as well so it all kind of adds up and makes sense at this moment so they find nothing in the box the puppets wake up they attack them they are automated and they are using ninja technology but eventually they heat up and we see some new jutsus right so um from boruto's jutsu i think he figured out how to throw a lightning jutsu like he figured out how to throw like a shidori looking jutsu right i don't know if that is the case right but from the perspective that i'm looking at it he figured out how to throw a shidori and the thing is that sarada also knows katon goga kuno jutsu which is like the iconic you know fire technique for the uchiha now the thing is that in the anime they have a lot of fillers so instead of wasting these fillers on stupid things like arts and drawings or not that kind of stuff like they can actually give us episodes in which these characters train to, and learn to use certain jutsus instead of just giving us all these stupid fillers right so um, in there, there was this pose of Sarada kicking the um, puppets and stuff and it looked so wrong. Like, the whole pose just looks wrong because the way in which she is drawn is, you know, drawn specifically to suit what she is wearing and she's not wearing combat gear. So, the whole pose just looks wrong because they don't want us to see her underwear. So, it's like, why draw her in a dress which will show her underwear in any kind of movement that she does, right? So, you know, Mitsuki uses foot on top of her and he uses his hands, right? But then in the anime, he uses his mouth. The puppets fall down, they are taken out, and then we get introduced to this jutsu that, or this technique that Katasuke uses, right? This ninja technology is so dangerous to the point where I think, right? And I'm only guessing, not confirming, I'm only guessing that this guy was able to create something 
as powerful as the Godama because if you remember if you launch any jutsu at the Godama it actually neutralizes it so it's either you know what of orbs he created was Godama right because they are able to fucking take nature elements into ninja tools right and then you know unleash them so why wouldn't they you know have a ninja tool which can absorb ninja tools? so either these are actually Godama created through the power of science or you know Katasuke is actually a genius which he has proven back to back right so yeah that proves these ninja tools are very dangerous so in the next panel we get introduced to the one and only Konohamaru who is apparently comforting his teammates right but then Al comes in and he says you know what I'm gonna kill all of you guys because he does not want them to get away with the information this nigga pulls out a machine gun like he's, this nigga's about to put bullet holes in all of these niggas this guy is a fucking savage now the thing is i don't think anyone there is fast enough to dodge bullets but then again we don't know what this cannon is gonna fire whatever it is right i most likely know that konohamaru has dealt with it before because all the puppets were laying on the floor right meaning that konohamaru actually dealt with them it's either he dealt with them and then went into hiding to make sure that you know backup comes before he attacked again or it was Al who has been chasing konohamaru and put konohamaru's partner in that state if he really is holding a gun right or a machine gun that is actually a machine gun which fires out bullets then it kind of confirms that the ninja age is coming to an end because technology is just gonna, you know, make them all redundant. Why fight a nigga when you can just shoot him, right? And that is what our is about to do. And unfortunately, that is where the chapter ends. Now, I'm gonna make a follow-up video talking about, you know, um, the whole pairing ward nonsense that is going on as well as Mangaka using that as a weapon. And then I'm also gonna talk about the ninja tools and about what or how they should be used in Boruto before they actually ruin the entire show based on the direction that the ninja tools are going. So, with that being said, like the video if you liked it, subscribe obviously and comment in the comment section down below because I do read comments just because I do not reply doesn't mean I do not read them because I am very busy. So, you know, leave your comments in the comment section down below and watch some of the videos at the end and especially that playlist full of Boruto stuff which, you know, you most likely haven't watched if you are in new subscriber with that being said i have nothing more to say bye